Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, to start with, we can already see what Bitcoin is doing. It's rejecting a critical level. And Bitcoin now is more of that risk on trade. It's more of that than the inflation hedge. Uh, just everybody that usually watches these videos, you might hear a little reverb on this video. I'm setting up a new office, so I apologize for that in advance, but let's get to it. So there are five major things that I need to go over with you. There are five things that I've gone over the past week to determine whether or not we're bottoming. And we're gonna do an update on that right now. We also have to go through Meta and the dumpster fire of its earnings, which quite frankly, I don't think are that bad. Spoiler alert, and I do wanna walk through one trade with you, but let's just jump right into this so that we can see. First and foremost, Bitcoin rallied right up to this level and then we faltered. Now, what I like to do is use a 12, a 25, a 12, a 22, and a 55. Apologies, it's been a long day uh, setting this office up and in between it trading. So, but you see right in that level, we reject it. And now you can start seeing the roll and you see how we're coming straight across. Now watch this today. And it really had me second guessing myself to the point of looking at this and going, you know, maybe I'm on the wrong side of this. I looked at CLSK and I might even have top ticked the darn thing. Uh, but as it is, I'm still short the BLOK. And so I'm all right with it. I'm, I'm quite comfortable with that short. It looks like it's finally going to start here. So if you are in this and you are in Bitcoin, you're going to want to be really careful here with what you're doing, especially the way that that's starting to roll with the lower low. Now, you never know. It's pretty manipulated. Uh, but it does seem to me like a test of that 60 level does seem pretty obvious that it's coming. It does really seem like that is not something that would should shock the world. And you are starting to see these names finally start to give. We always call this two a days. And so what you really mean by that is not working out twice a day, but two a days. So like you go one, two. So here's where you're expecting it to break. And then it doesn't. And then you get the hopers and the dreamers and they hang on for a day. And then they come in and then their hopes and dreams are smashed. So then they close when they should have closed earlier. So instead of closing when they should have closed, they close up here 100 points higher. Then they get out of the way and then we put the shorts on, right? And this is pretty common practice and we see this a lot. But... Uh, this is pretty much exactly what you're looking for. Like if you are a, someone that likes to short long term, this is about as pretty as it gets. I mean, you're setting up to break. There's your stop. You have to have, I'll refer to it as guts, but in order to short it, because you never know what's going to happen. Life's like a box of chocolates, but that's setting up there. I really don't want to spend that much time on these names, although they are setting up. There's too much really to go over. I think MSTR looks as a much better short than, than really even coin here, but that is pretty much encapsulating the other bar. I do want to go through all the economic data uh, and just give an update because I read something and it's, it, it's very, very... I'll say it. It's absolutely glaring if you think about it. And I really want to go through it with you guys. But there are five things that we need to cover and give an update on. And there's several of them that I don't believe other people have and I have access to. So let's get into it. Now, number one is equity risk premium. And why do I want to cover this again for everybody? Well, one, I was asked, and I always read your comments. So feel free to leave comments. It does mean that I probably will follow up. Uh, I do read all the comments and I just want to go through what it is again. Equity risk premium. What are you getting to buy equities versus the 10 year treasury? And we can see that zero line right here. Now, if you always look at the zero line, the zero line would be, you know, this refers to earnings yield, which is roughly 4%, might be a little higher now. But what this is going to do for us is you can see where we flipped and we couldn't get past zero. And if you look at how your trading's gone since then, it's probably not gone great unless you've changed your style or realized that you've had to be adaptive, right? And this is what people don't get. This is what people always miss about when I talk about the stool, the macro leg, the fundamental, and the technical. They're never getting this, right? They're not understanding this. And this is the kind of stuff that separates people from being okay traders to good traders and then developing the skill set because they're going, oh, well, what's, what's the equity, you know, What's the equity risk premium? Well, what, what's the earnings yield on the S&P right now? Oh, and what's the 10-year at? Okay, well, that's why they're leaning on the market right now because pension funds are getting paid to buy the 10-year versus buying the, the S&P. Well, that makes sense, right? So, but nevertheless, we're just gonna spend a second here. What are you seeing here? We're seeing this start to go higher. So they are willing to take some, some risk here to buy stocks, right? They're willing to take some risk on the earnings to buy stocks here. That's what we're starting to see. And what started to happen as soon as we saw that? We're starting to see this lift. Now, this V, that does not mean go out and buy tech stocks. That means that you're seeing other sectors that are starting to participate. We had a really good trade yesterday in uh, 
a lot of the home builders, right? Now today, not so much, but that's going to be the market you're in. You're going to be in this kind of market and we know why you're fighting the trend. If we have time, I'll get into fighting the trend, but this is the first thing that I want to cover for everybody. Equity risk premium, while still negative, which it is because we're low, we are starting to make higher lows. And I think that's important for people to get. So that's the first thing we're going to cover. Second is smart money, dumb money. Now, for those that have been following this for some time, you are already aware of it, but let's do a real quick recap for the new people. Smart money, we don't refer to this. We refer to this as institutions. Why? Because this is how it's calculated. Smart money is calculated by institutional vehicles, meaning if you're looking at what's doing the CFTC or you're looking at CTAs, that kind of stuff. Dumb money is ETFs, small lot options. So we look at this. And what we're always looking for is the crosses. So we're always looking for smart money. What we want to see from smart money, if we are to look at this, the market goes up when, quote, smart money or institution sells. And when retail buys, we go up. Institution sell, retail buys, the market goes up. Institution sell, retail buys, the market goes up. Right? See these little marks? And we can see that pretty clearly, right? And what are we seeing right here? Again, we're not going to get into the minutiae. We're just going to get a little, a little touch on what's going on. We're banging a U-turn right here. So what's happening? We're starting to go higher. So are they going to continue to go higher or not? I don't know, but here's what's interesting. We have the equity risk premium that is that has bottomed. And at the same time, you're in a position here where you're starting to push. And I think that's really important for us to note. So we don't need to go here and crack. I would like that. I would like the fall through. I'd like the carnage. I want to buy things as cheap as possible. I'm sure we all do, but I'm not sure that we're going to get what I want and what I get are two different things. And we all know that about trading and we have to take what we can get, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to monitor this and we're going to pay really close attention to it. Let's get to the third thing. Now, the third thing is something that most people don't watch. And I do watch this and I watch it very closely and I'll explain why. Most people haven't been able to watch this or haven't had a need to watch it because they haven't been trading for a long period of time. So they don't even really know the relevance of it. And where am I going with this? Well, you always want to watch margin debt as a percentage as it grows. And why? You want to look at the rate of change. So what this marks is a 12 month rate of change of margin. Who's on margin? Who's not on margin? Why do you care? I'm glad you asked. The more you're on margin, the more volatility. And you'll say, I never noticed that before. I'm going to explain why you never noticed it before in a moment. But if you look at 17, when we got up in here, you're like, well, that didn't really do much. And there's a reason why it didn't. And there's a reason back here in 14, why it didn't do much. And there's a reason why it did a heck of a lot here and why everybody got off a of margin until you flip that level. And if you go back and take a look at this level and you go take a look at where the market bottomed, this gets pretty clear. My concern is that we're back here and I'll show you why this is something that we need to monitor. And it doesn't mean that we're going to miraculously drop because you can always go higher, right? It's margin. You can always go higher on margin. What I want to do is watch the, tra the trajectory of this over here. And the reason I want you to watch this is not because it means that you're going to go up or down, but it's going to give you an increase in volatility. And that's, let me explain why it's going to increase the volatility. And this is what people are missing out with what's going on under the hood right now. So what you'll see here is the 1 p.m. time frame, just so you can see when we got in right in here. And what we're doing, we're getting in at like 8.10 and then as it's pushing up, I'm using low a day as a stop on it because I'm going to see if it's going to hold or not. But some people are just buying and then they're just trading out and I'm giving levels. And what we're doing is we're watching these levels. I'm just marking them off for people, right? So when it gets up to here, some people don't want to go back to, and see if this is going to happen or not. Some people do. Everyone has to trade how they want to. So we pull money out, made three bucks, made six bucks, and then it kept going. And then stuck at 815, trimmed more, stop was low of the day. It became very clear it was going to break and some people actually shorted it. I bought puts at one point at like 805. It just made sense. You could just tell. It's very rare that you're going to come up and retest the same level three times and not break. One, two, three. Just remember that. It's very, it's very, very rare. And we had some meta we did okay with. Um, obviously not after hours, but let's get, let's keep going. But you know, it's up to everybody if they want to hold after hours or not. And it's usually not prudent unless you're up 10%, but we have to get into that quarter. Anyway, you can see that you're dropping like a stone here. Well, what does this have to do with margin? This is what it has to do with margin. I would tell everybody that you are fighting the tide right now and people need to understand that. And we're going to get to that in a moment. But what people need to really get their little noodle around is this is how long I've been trading. I'm very, very old. I'm lucky I can walk. So I'm in my late forties, but this is what's so funny. I started like back here. So we always had margin. We always, always had margin, right? All right. This is what 
is interesting. So you get the great financial crisis. And let's say that you did trade in the great financial crisis you had from 04 on. Let's say you didn't trade during the great financial crisis. You're not used to margin. You're not used to margin actually costing anything. The majority of people that started trading from 09 on are not used to margin. So all of a sudden they're getting their bills and it's like, oh, you owe $1,400 on the month. And people are going, well, what the heck for? Well, margin, you have to pay interest on the margin. Besides being short and long and, and all those costs went up, right, on the rehypothecation of shorts. So all of a sudden you're getting this bill every month. So not only are you losing money, <laughs> you're paying for the privilege. So what does that mean? Well, you're going to get a ton of volatility based upon that. Your volatility, when you have margin rates, go look at the volatility in the market from 22 over this period of time. And you're going to get volatility like this. On just, just standard volatility is going to increase. And based upon that, you know, a lot of people look at the VIX and go, the VIX is broken. No, a lot of people know that they don't need to to worry about that because the average daily true range of mo movement is just going to be wider because of the percentage. So you always want to watch that percentage because that percentage, that percentage is a reason why you're going to get NVIDIA that's just going to start whacking around $20, $30 for no reason. Okay. And people are going to go, oh, it's breaking, it's cracking, it's doing this. No, it's just Wednesday. Okay. And we do have a lot of pressure on the market. That's very obvious. Like this is not normal pressure and we're going to get to this. And this is obviously is really bad, but that's the third thing that you have to watch. Okay. And we will cover that. Let's get into the fourth thing, which is going to be more technical. So if we look at the NASDAQ, there is something very clear here for us to pay a very close attention to, in my opinion. And that is just the mere fact that the cues and the histogram have turned here. And since they've turned, all we're doing is grinding higher. So while we're seeing all this volatility, this is actually staying in place and actually working in our favor. Now you might not think that that's good, but that does mean that we could be putting in a short-term bottom on the, on the market. So if we come up and down and fill in a little bit, it's not that big of a deal, right? What people need to understand is that you're just not going to just rally all the way up. But this MACD is telling us that this is a possible bottom. And it's done that before. It doesn't mean it's the bottom, but it does mean that, hey, we might go sideways for like a month or two. So that means that we can trade in here. What's gonna kill everybody is that they think they're trading this when they're not trading that. And you know that because you know that the earnings risk premium has completely shifted since this happened, right? And since you know that, you understand that you're in a different market because you really are lacking that institutional support. And that is in itself the difference. So this is number four. Number five, this is the McClellan Oscillator. And the McClellan Oscillator really focuses on the advanced decline. I turn it into a histogram. And what I'm always looking for is this. I don't use it up top. I use it only for the bottom. You can use it however you want. I'm telling you how I use it. You see that bottom? See when you hit this level right there? And then you hit this level, okay? That's when we started to turn. And then we made the lower low, or the, I'm sorry, we, we made the higher low, higher low, Okay, and then what starts to happen? They start buying the New York Stock Exchange. So it's really not as bad overall as people think it is. It's just not the names that they're in, right? And that's becoming the issue here. People are just like, oh, well, this just looks, this looks awful. It doesn't look that awful if you're looking at the right names. And I think that that's where people are making that mistake. You start looking at names like SLG, you're down a whopping 48 basis points today, right? So that's what you have to start looking at going, okay, well, what is actually holding in there, right? The CPNG, we start looking at names like CPNG. Take a look at this name today. I've got a new 52 week closing high and I've got basically a dragonfly at the top of a chart. I'm okay. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Not gonna lie. So when I start to see this, I want to pay attention to it, right? You're going to have to start doing some work and not expecting the usual suspects. It's why I went through last, what was it, Monday, we went through the tech and how tech is changing. And there, I did that for a reason because tech's not going to lead. We're going to make money trading tech, but tech's not going to lead. It's going to be something else for a period of time. And if you are doubting that, all you have to do is just keep looking at the cues, reverse to the spy, then go here. And again, I apologize for the reverb. Let me know how bad the reverb is. Uh, in the comments below. I'm not sure how bad it is. It's bad in my ears right now. Like I can hear it behind me, but I haven't had time to get set up and I really wanted to get this out for everybody. So, but you see how you're turning here and how the cues are not winning versus the spy. They're underperforming. We want to watch that. If we take a look here and we flipped it, right? We showed you how you could flip these. You have to put the line in between them and go from there. Apologies. So when you see like that, right? So once you see that, it's very clear. Like, oh, okay, well that's a reverse head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders. And so, yeah, that's going to be a pickle. 
So when we see this stuff, we want to pay attention to it, right? And so that's where I'm going with that. And I think those five things, we're going to monitor them and go from there. But understand the volatility is going to increase. I love it, quite frankly, because I get to trade again. I, I really didn't like having the cups on where every single day. It was just, we're going to go up, we're going to do this. And it was just so controlled because of the, the Fed. And now that you have actual rate and you have consequences for your actions, the volatility makes it a lot more fun. And it definitely makes it more lucrative, no matter what side of the market you're on. But we have to talk about something. So I was asked today what kind of pattern this is. And for lack of a better term, we're going to call it the really, really, really bad pattern. And I'm going to clean up my language for several reasons. This is a textbook short textbook where you are gapping down and then you are rallying up and then you are gapping down again, right? Once you hit that 55 and you gap like that and then you have a bear flag here, like this is about as ugly as you can get. I thought for sure you might get some love at the end of the day, you got nothing. So we have to realize and be very cognizant on how bad that is. And you have some earnings that came out tonight. We'll see how that responds. But when people are trying to play the long side, like I played the long side today and we did okay with the trade, we actually made money. You have to look at this and go, what am I doing? So there's a saying that I have where it's like you're fighting the tape and you should be familiar with this, but if you're new, you might not be. So let's clean all these off for a second and just make sure that everybody gets on the same page here. If you have a 12, a 22 and a 55 and they look like this on your index, Okay. And you're buying stocks in that index. You're fighting the tape. Why? Because I'll walk through what these mean to me. So the 12 means, should I put on a, 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 a swing trade or not a swing trade? The answer is no. The 22 is, or who's in charge? The bulls or the bears, right? For those that are new, you're hearing this for the first time. For those that have been listening, you're hearing it for the thousandth, right? So above bulls, below bears. So do I want to put a swing trade on if the bears are in control and the, the, the swing trades tell me not to put one on? All right. 55, I've lost institutional support. I use a 12, a 22, a 55. You should use what you're comfortable with. So when you look at this, that's fighting the tape. Now, if you're fighting an index that's telling you you don't have institutional support, you shouldn't be putting on a swing trade, and by the way, the bears are in charge, and we're going out there and going, no, oh, that's my NVIDIA. And then you go out there and you look at the socks, right? And then the same thing. So I am top down, okay? index, then sector, than stock, right, in that order. So when you have this doing the same thing, okay, I shouldn't do a swing trade here, the bears are in control and I don't have institutional support. And then you have the same thing here, you can't, you, you can't be shocked when it doesn't work, right? Because that's fighting the tape, just so you understand that. So when people are looking at Lamb Research tonight and they're going, well, it had good earnings, but I don't understand why it's down. I don't know, the index is down, the sector's down, and all the technical indicators are pointing down. I, I don't know. Why do you think it didn't work, right? So because what, you're, what people are telling you is, I don't have institutional support. The bears are in control of the stock and you shouldn't be doing a swing trade, okay? Now, I would like it when, I like it when the earnings are so good that they just rally and we'll see what this brings tomorrow. But that's what we have to look at. For example, Meta taken to the cleaners, absolutely taken to the cleaners tonight where you're at 418 and it just keeps dropping. And the question is why? Well, it's relatively simple. Um, they increased their capital spending and people are paying for it right now. Now, at the time I'm recording this, I'm not on the call, but I could tell you with my 25 years of trading that the call's not going well looking at the stock, right? That's not going well, is it? So why? Because there's probably explaining how much more capital spending is coming at the time. Uh, the high end of the capital spending was 37 billion. And they said, why not spend 40? Why spend 37? So everyone was looking for them to come between 30 to 37. They're saying we're going to spend 40. And we're seeing this come in really, really, really hard to the point where you just drop $10 on a one minute bar while we're talking. Is it overkill? I don't know. The sector's telling you that we're pointing down, right? If you go take a look at the XLC, that's telling you that we're pointing down. And then at the same time, you're getting Google, right? That's just going to follow it all the way down for some reason, but it is. Now, Google's kind of interesting because that might be the opportunity tomorrow to get in front of that, right, for a quick trade. But right now you have Meta down about 18%, and quite frankly, it looks to me like you're getting ready to fall off a cliff. So it's not getting better. It's, frankly, it's getting a lot worse. So even us just looking at this, we're down 40 points in five minutes, but we'll see. Well, I'm sure you'll get some kind of bounce eventually. I don't think you'll break 400 unless he said, by the way, we're closing Instagram. Uh, but 20, 20 
percent is a really, really huge move here. So I think it's really important for us to understand the environment that we're in and how these names are going to react to that environment. I don't think there's really much more to say about that, but I want to be very clear about that. Same with Lamb Research, and this is what we're seeing. So even Tesla yesterday, I was really surprised at how well this did, and it did exceptional. And these are the kinds of things that we want to continue to watch. Now, for our sake, we have to understand that PCE is coming out this week on Friday, and that's going to be something that we have to say. But with what we went over tonight, I want to keep it short and sweet, which I probably didn't do. And I want to just get this out there that you have to understand your current environment. Watch the current environment you're in and trade what is actually happening. Don't tell the market what it's going to do. That's the last thing that you want to do. For example, we did this trade today in uh, ARM and we did exceptional with it. And the reason that we did so well with it is we didn't tell the market what it was going to do. All we did was watch the trade, allow the trade to work. Here, I'll show you. And all we did was allow the trade to work. We watched the pop up and then we just let it set itself up. And once it did that, it became really easy. We knew we had a seller in here. What I like about this name, quite frankly, is we know we have a seller. We know who the seller is. I mean, that doesn't get any clearer than the rally, the, the, the head fake where you can't get over the open. And I'm gonna give you a really quick tip here. And you, if you take one thing, there's a lot in this video that I went over for everybody, but the one thing that people really need to take home from this video is this, you need to mark the opens. And if you can't get over the opens on those retests, it tells you everything that you need to know. You need to watch that. Here, watch this video. And there goes ARM. So that's really interesting from a short perspective. So I'm gonna short stock with this being the high. So it's gonna cost me a dollar to short here. And let's watch here. But I think that that could come back down here. So I think it's worth the dollar to enter that level. That's a pretty big level that you just rejected from. So I like that. And I like that we've encapsulated that. So I can find options for those that don't wanna short. I mean, do I wanna spend $2 on these? I think I do. I think that's a ridiculous, ridiculous price point. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pay two bucks for a bunch of these. I bought the 100 puts on the weeklies. I mean, I was just there. They'd be worth five bucks if they were just traded back to where they were. I can use the high of the day as well as a stop, but I like that a lot as a trade. I think that's a really cheap way to be in that short. So if you're trading stock, you want to pull something out, you're up like 20% on those options. I'm not doing anything, guys. I'm looking for like a 95 96 kind of day on it but if you're trading stock and you want to pull something out pull something out you know there's nothing wrong with that right you don't have to do what i'm doing you have 20 percent. if you want to pull something out of it go for it i mean there's nothing wrong with that right there's literally nothing wrong with that i'm going to trim a little bit of that arm just in case we bounce off of that i don't really want to go through that but i'm going to leave the puts where they are okay so now you're holding sideways and you're holding the open so you're going to want to be cognizant of that right so are we going to hold that are we going to flip that let's watch this level here and see how that goes okay we definitely want to pay attention there because if you flip that then you could come back to here and not everyone's going to want to deal with that and there goes arm so we are starting to see some of that. So again, if you you know want to be out of some of that, or you're going to go back to break even, just know what you're doing here. Pull money out of it. So you take money out and you're out of the way. This is why you pull money out on the way down. So that when it does this kind of stuff, you're not panicking. Welcome to the party, Mr. Funk. Anyone see that movie? Follow the Bride? Low of the day. Very little for me to do there. So you should be up a dollar and change on those puts. Hashtag winning. Arm, I'm staying with the puts, staying with the short. Again, you should be pulling money out on the way down if you want. I think we're going to do really well with those. I mean, I know we're already up a dollar and a half on those, but I think we're going to do really well there. Arm's still below that 100. I'm just leaving those on. I think arm can at minimum gap fill. So I hope you found that hopeful. I hope you get it. I really want people to get that and get hope from it that you can do this. It's, it's getting out into positive slippage. I was asked to show these over and over again. You want to get out when the getting's good, right? I mean, this was something that was a very simple trade on stock. On the short side, we were able to make money. On the option, we made over 100%. Get what you can in this environment and simply get out of the way. That's, that's the way to trade right now. That's it.